What's good y'all, your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we gotta talk about this year's Monday Night Raw after Mania. And it, it's safe to say that this year's Monday Night Raw after Mania was infinitely better than last year's show, which was a complete debacle. This year's show, the crowd was electric the entire time. They had over 20,000 people in attendance tonight crowd was lit for damn near everything energetic they definitely showed out tonight in philly shout out to y'all for really showing up tonight and overall we got some new stories that are progressing and this was a very good um enjoyable monday night raw after mania very interested to see what they do on smackdown but they they started off the show with Triple H, and I'm not going to go into everything, but I'm going to go into the major stuff that happened on the show. Start off with show with Triple H, crowd chanting, thank you, uh, thank you Triple H to him, and he's letting, you know, he let people know, like, I should be telling y'all thank you, because y'all broke all type of metric records this weekend, and y'all made this one of the best WrestleManias of all time. Then, <clears throat> he brought out Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes comes out there to a huge standing ovation. The You Deserve It chance. It was such a beautiful moment. Uh, him having the championship. It, it felt like something new was about to happen. We were in this new era. And Triple H uh, was telling them, hey, um, we're proud of you. Um, some people in the back, some people, production people in the back, they made this for you. And they showed a promo package of his his rise and you know how far he's come from you know the him being you know cody like him growing up in the wwe system and and being stardust and him having to leave and going on the independent scene to really make his name obviously i don't think they could show any aew footage but the fact him leaving becoming who he is to come back and then the story he had to overcome this weekend it was a beautiful, beautiful sight to see. He got emotional. It was an emotional, you know, just a promo package just to see that moment. And that was really, really dope. And, um, you know, crowd giving a standing ovation. And then he even said, you know, he hit the what, what you want, what we, you know, what I want to talk about. And he brought up the fact someone asked him why you keep doing this and what, what motivates you to keep doing this. And he said, you know, if you look up above and on the Titan drawn above, it's his daughter saying, finish the story, daddy. So that's one of his motivations. It was beautiful. Love it. Love it. Love it. Just a great moment. He finally, you know, he finally was able to beat the tribal chief. He even show respect to the tribal chief. He said, you know, Roman, you know, had one of the most legendary title reigns of all time. And he did a fantastic job, you know being the wwe champion and you got a thank you roman chant which was pretty awesome too and then cody said but i would have i was the one to defeat him great then the rock music hit the rock comes out there and they're chanting rocky at the start but after the entrance and all the pageantry they were booing this nigga like he was dominic mysterio and he, they were milking it Anytime he was about to say something, they're booing him out the building. Anytime he's about to even lift the microphone, they're booing him out the building. At one point, they got he, we got to shut the fuck up, champ. <laughs> Just loving this new era of WWE. You know, they had to mute it out, but definitely The Rock had his, uh, his moment to say something back. <laughs> but... He came out there to try to give Cody his flowers. The crowd kept booing him. And then The Rock just said, fuck it. <laughs> and he he hit the, you know, we got a, a great, y'all said a, an attendant record for trailer, the, the largest gathering of a trailer, trailer park trash. Now you shut the fuck up. He was going off on the crowd cursing. It was great. He was smiling while he was doing it. It was fucking fantastic. People ate that shit up. I'm like, I'm loving this era of them allowing them to be a little bit more edgier and i think we're going to get more of that once they go to netflix as well so loving it but he wanted to give cody his flowers he said i want to come out here give you your flowers you finished your story after all that i've done to you after you know me whooping you like a dog and 
making you bleed and 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 you know telling mama rose what i was gonna do all this other stuff you finish your story so you know congratulations um but you know he also alluded that he was also gonna go away but he's like before you know i end up leaving and anything like that you mind if i can hold that he was talking about his championship cody's championship because he's like I've won a lot of championships, but I've never held that one. And it was getting weird. So I was like, what? Like, Cody, why, why would you? First of all, why he wants to hold it? Like, what, what's going on? And Cody, why would you even consider it? So then Cody responds. He had the championship that was given to him by um, Muhammad Ali's um, uh, wife. So he was like, well, let me hold that one. So they traded championships. Cody held the one The Rock has that was gifted to him, and The Rock has the WWE Championship, Undisputed Championship. And then he puts his around his shoulder. And the crowd chanting, this is awkward, because it's awkward, because this guy's been beating them up for weeks and talking trash, and then they trade championships. And then they slowly trade, you know, give each other the championship back. But before he does that, he says, The Rock says, hmm, I like how this feels. So... The Rock made a point to mention that, Cody, you finished your story with Roman. That that story that y'all had is done. You beat him. But when I come back, I think me and you need to, you know, have our story. I think me and you need to, you know, have our face off whenever I do come back. Because he made another point to make. You beat him. For the championship. But on night one, I pinned you. And I was like, oh, that's very interesting. That's very interesting that he said that. And, and it's the way he said that and how he's like, yeah, you beat him. But you never beat me, though. I pinned you on night one. So, and then I also like the fact that Cody's like, well, technically, you know, you are my boss. You are on the board members with TKO. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I am the champion, right? I am the top champion. I'm at the top. So that means if you're my boss, then I'm your champion. I'm your head champion. Just very interesting dynamic here. And then before The Rock left, before he's about to... You know, do whatever he's about to do and leave. He said, oh, one more thing. He gets something out of his pocket. He doesn't show nobody what it is. Cody, you know, goes in. He gives it to Cody in his hand. We still don't know what it is. And he says, Cody, you don't even have to look at what's in, the, in my hand. You already know what it is. You already know what it is. Just next time... <laughs> Don't break my heart. And then he walks away. And no one knows what's going on. And Cody has this peculiar look on his face. And I'm just like, hmm, what the hell is happening here? I, this was, I like this because we don't know. All we can do is speculate. We have no real concrete idea. But the one thing we do have some type of idea or some type of direction is when The Rock comes back, he also said, whether you're a champion or not, I forgot to mention this, he also said, whether you're a champion or not, I want to face you for that title. Plain and simple. If you're the champion or not, doesn't matter. I want to face you for the title. So it's not even, he made it, he made it seem like it's not even really just, even if you do have the championship, that's cool. But if you don't have the championship, I still want to face you. Which is very interesting. This is, it's really mind blowing. This whole entire segment is, it gives the vibes of whenever Rock comes back, most likely Cody will still be the champion. I think he wants to face Cody for the championship. Because I just don't see Cody losing it anytime soon. So, it's very interesting. But what makes that even more, like, crazy is the fact that 
it comes off like he don't give a fuck about Roman. It comes off as, well, Roman couldn't get the job done, but I pinned you. And if you guys remember, he was the one that asked Roman to tag him in so he could pin the Rock. That's the only reason why he tagged in. And then at the night two, there was a part where they showed the Rock looking at Roman as he had the weight belt, but only Paul Heyman was helping him up. He was just kind of looking at him. And I'm like, hmm. And then they cut to another angle. So this is very interesting, bro. This is very, very interesting. I'm loving what they're doing right now with this whole situation. We have a lot more questions than answers, and I can't wait. I truly can't wait to see whenever The Rock does come back, how is that going to play off, play out? Because he wants to face Cody. He seems like we may get that one-on-one. But the bigger question is, how is Roman Reigns going to feel about this? I really want to know how Roman's going to feel. So I don't know, but this should be a great one. Also, before I get out of here, because I don't want to make this video too long, we got to talk about Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. Drew came out there for the Fatal 4-Way to see who's going to be the number one contender for the uh, World Heavyweight Championship, and he was pissed. He was walking with a purpose. He got a microphone. He said, I had my moment, you know, taken away from me. I had my moment for like five minutes. Crowd was, you know, you know, laughing at him. He said, you think that's funny? That's five minutes longer than you guys could last in bed. Shut up. <laughs> like, it's just, he's rogue. He's super rogue now at this point. But he said, I want to give props to Seth Rollins because you stood on your convictions, you died on your shield, and you, 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 you were a man of, man of your word. You went out there and you gave it your best, you know, and we had a moment out there, which they did. They had a moment ringside where, you know, Seth Rollins was emotional and it seemed like he was telling them, you know, you deserve it or take care of the title or whatever. But they had a moment. So he gave Seth Rollins props like, I, I respect you, Seth. We may not get along, but I respect what you did on, on Sunday. But then he started talking about Damian Priest. <laughs> he called him because <laughs> he, he's been cashed in on twice by money in the bank winners. And he thinks the concept is stupid. And he's like, I got cashed in on by <laughs> a bondage undertaker. <laughs> he playing into uh, Damian Priest trending for being a bisexual <laughs> undertaker on Twitter, bro. So I love he was talking shit about Damian Priest. Or whatnot, and then he even got to see him pump. And he he was like, Bro, what's crazy is I told you I was gonna win. I told you I was gonna rub it in your face, and you sat there making jokes on your headset when I was in your face, but you didn't do nothing. But as soon as I turned my back, you attacked me from behind, and you essentially is the reason why I got cashed in on and lost my championship. <laughs> Like, you, you know, like, you waited until I turned away. So, at this point, it's on site with you, CM Punk. I'm not just going to try to injure you. I'm going to try to destroy you. Your body can't hang up. You know, I think he said, you know, I'm, I'm, it was more or less like his body can't hold up. His body's falling apart anyway, but I'm going to destroy you. But when I see you, it's on site. And then that's when uh, Jimmy, uh, Jay comes out there and then, Everybody else starts making their way to the ring. So we get to the finish of the match. And it's just Jay and um, Drew in the ring. Drew's setting up for the Claymore kick. And then you see CM Punk come out of nowhere, grabs his leg, and Drew can't move it. He sees him, and then, you know, Drew's distracted. And because of that distraction, Jay Uso ends up getting the upper hand, hitting him with the uh, spear and hitting him with the, the Uso splash from the top rope for the one, two, three. And Jay Uso is the number one contender for Damian Priest's World Heavyweight Championship. And CM Punk cost him once again. CM Punk gets on commentary and starts doing the yeet dance. And I'm just like, just laughing. I'm like, oh, this is about to be good. So now CM Punk it's cost him twice. Oh, this is going to be good. I can't wait to see what type of timing Drew is going to be on.
because he was on some demon time tonight. Oh, it's up. That Drew and CM Punk feud, ah, that match when they ever when when CM Punk finally gets a hundred percent healthy, oh, this is gonna be, it's gonna be cinema. So comment down below. Let me know what's your thoughts and opinions on the opening segment of Monday Night Raw tonight. Also, uh, did you guys enjoy this episode of Monday Night Raw? And what are you guys looking forward to? Um, storyline wise, what they've been showing us. Me personally, this rock and Cody stuff, I cannot wait. Cannot wait to, you know, whenever The Rock does come back and they can revisit this because I it's very interesting to see how things are going to play out. Also, I definitely want to know what The Rock gave to Cody. So, we'll see how that play out. But I appreciate all love, support, the road to 50 k and I'm seeing Speedy YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all. Pre ah, can't even talk. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.